Good morning, everybody. It is uh, June 30th uh, uh, today, and uh, right now I'm just going to give you a quick uh, market update. Uh, see what's happening with Bitcoin. See, uh, the, there's a bunch of news out there right now. Some good news, in my opinion, uh, that you uh, need to know about. So we're going to keep those in the uh, description uh, for you to read up on. I'm just going to lightly brush on those uh, uh, on those news, just talk a bit about them and talk about Bitcoin's price action. So Today, Bitcoin is uh, in the negative, uh, um, negative 2.55 in terms of a bit of a downtrend. We're seeing that uh, retracement. Uh, today, we uh, opened at the 35,911 and uh, went all the way up to the 36,100. Then as a low, we had a low of uh, 34,500. So we're currently sitting at the 34,900. And obviously, uh, overall, if you've uh, been watching uh, the stream yesterday, we were talking about uh, uh, Bitcoin overall uh, being due for some sort of rechasement. So we had a breakout here um, yesterday. Uh, buyers have been pushing ever since uh, June 27th. Uh, we had sideways action for a bit, pushing us all the way to today. It took almost three days for us to actually continue to jab uh, uh, against this uh, well-established resistance that we had here since uh, May 18th. So it's uh, well over a month now that we have this uh, uh, resistance. Uh, initially, we tried to break above it here on the on June 13th, so a couple of uh, weeks ago, exactly actually, so two weeks and the two days uh, ago. Pretty uh, parabolic, we just completely skyrocketed, went all the way up, met the um, 200 EMA on the four hour, and then we had that rejection tried to find some support here couldn't really now uh, uh, the main thing you know that we need to kind of compare what's happening today versus what's happening then uh, this is the second attempt at that breakout so that's good uh, at that breakout we didn't really you know we just parabolically continued to go up we didn't fully you know because especially when it's a hard resistance especially when we're at such a critical time with bitcoin especially when there's so much news out there the market now is well versed with what's happening with china with the crackdowns and all that we had that breakout really pushed all the way up in my opinion it's probably more um leverage traders that were trying to capitalize on that movement pushed all the way up got rejected and we didn't really come back down to retest it to prove that this became a uh, support now you know this is a uh, well-established resistance we need to at least come back down to it retest it and say hey this is the new support now we've been resisting at it for a while and uh, we need to prove that it's turned to support for us to continue to uptrend so Yesterday, if you were watching the stream, we were talking about um, Bitcoin actually uh, at one point. So we have this support since June 26th, it's almost four day support that we pushed up. We stayed sideways here for a bit. So if you're comparing that to before here, we just fully just skyrocketed past this. Now here, we actually jabbed across it multiple times. So showing you more uh, strength in the market, showing you that buyers are ready. The market could be ready for an actual uptrend for Bitcoin. And now we pushed all the way up, didn't fully retest it yet. Yesterday, we we're somewhere here saying, we're most likely gonna break the support. And uh, we, yeah, we now we need to go back down to this uh, uh, resistance and now see if this resistance is going to hold. Uh, sorry, the support now uh, is going to hold or no. And we need to see right now the biggest question, in my opinion, for the next couple of days is the market ready for another uptrend for Bitcoin? Has the, is this it? Is this the, uh, uh, the level where Bitcoin actually flips and starts to reverse back to the upside after dropping 55% in terms of price action? If we zoom, went all the way to the 65, and now we're sitting at uh, almost, uh, what do we have here? Went all the way down to 55%. Now we're sitting at the 46%. So the past year, the past uh, three days, Bitcoin uh, pushed from the 30,100 all the way up to the uh, 36,525, uh, taking us at a 21% movement. And now I think this is probably the most important time for Bitcoin because if we broke above first time and that didn't hold, then we just went back down all the way back down to the lower levels and we pushed towards the 28,800. Um, a second retest with a, um, uh, with a support if this fails, then I think um, uh, uh, most more than likely we're going to continue to bo go back down and we might again um, uh, take another jab below the 20K. And I think a second time below the 20K is going to um, uh, just the fact that we actually pierced through that first time showing that there were sellers in the market. Obviously, we got bought up pretty quick if you're looking at the four hour here 
come here you'll see that we had a hammer candle all the way down here uh, telling us that bars are actually accumulating or there's some sort of redistribution in terms of those assets that bitcoin at lower levels buyers are more than willing to buy below the 30k that's pretty evident for the longest time here uh, this has been an accumulation zone if you're looking at the daily chart you'll see that um, overall just so many wicks to the bottom here telling you that these these uh, uh, buyers are not willing to uh, push the price action below the 30k until this day over here and even when it pushed again very quick to accumulate nice hammer candle on the daily showing you that sellers tried to push it but buyers said no push the price action back above to the opening price over here at the 35 31,500 and pushed it beyond so this is a nice um signal for the market that uh, uh yeah we need to have some sort of a uh, uh continued upward movement because buyers are just not accepting any price movement to the bottom specifically after downtrending for so long so you know how much selling pressure is there left in the market after we drop 55,000 at one point we were sitting for the whole crypto space at uh, 2.4 uh, trillion and uh, now at these lower levels here got to I think 1.1 or 1.2 trillion dollars so there's a whole uh <clears throat> sorry close to a trillion dollars that actually left the market in terms of selling uh, pressure continued selling for a while here it's been around uh, two months and a bit three months and now we're here so um again buyers are expected to come in at this level and even if this level does not hold you'll see how quickly these buyers are actually buying up at uh, any any dip below the 30k so uh, this is where we're at right now uh, overall you need to pay attention to the next couple of days here i'm looking at the hourly because you can't really see much on the, on the four hour pretty clear uh, we dropped, we, we we hovered here for a while. Buyers really were persi persistent to uh, breaking this break, uh, to breaking above this resistance. Pushed all the way up, came here for a bit, it stagnated. Um, you know, everyone's asking, are we going to continue to go up or are we actually breaking below this? Because we haven't really witnessed that. Uh, uh, we need to fully ensure and see how confident the market is and ready for another uptrend for Bitcoin. Because overall here, guys, if we're looking at the daily, you'll see that if we're looking at the MACD, the MACD has been on the bottom for a while. So the, in terms of the selling momentum has been really in the bottom. It's been downtrending ever since um, uh, the beginning of uh, actually. So February 20th is when we start seeing that drop in terms of um, momentum. So there's uh, not a lot of buying uh, momentum that's in the market as soon as we actually got to the 58. So the high $50,000 region. Again, we had a bearish pattern over here. And then as soon as we got to the top here, buying momentum was almost, you know, really at the bottom in terms of neutral, not really at the bottom, as in like it's, it's really decreased, bearish um, uh, rising wedge telling you that there's a lot of buying and not a lot of selling happening. At one point, no one sold. We are overextended. Bitcoin's at uh, 65K. Something needs to happen. News came out, China banning crypto and all that. Crypto mining outages, uh, you know, quote unquote outages in terms of uh, uh, mining in China. And then ever since we've been just having negative news, the market has been negative in terms of the sentiment. And now we're at these lower levels. So again, now we're seeing that momentum uh, to the upside starting to creep in slowly. We're seeing overall here. So just how we're looking at this chart. We're seeing that we had um, we are overextended to the top. RSI itself is giving us the slower highs. So you'll see here as soon as we got to uh, the 41,000, we peaked in terms of RSI all the way to a level of 87. Extremely overbought, way too overbought. And then when we dropped, we continued to push back up. Higher levels here uh, showed us lower levels in terms of the RSI. Again, we pushed back even higher highs in terms of the price action with lower highs in terms of the RSI this was signaling to the whole market that um this is uh, basically um a bearish divergence you know when you have higher highs in terms of price action and lowers that highs in terms of rsi that's telling you that sometimes soon here we are losing strength and that we are due for some sort of reversal so um as soon as we dropped here uh, at uh, may 19th we've been having lower highs in terms of uh, price action and lower lows as well while the rsi this is the first time where the rsi is actually um having higher lows coupled with lower highs in terms of price action so again we need to take that signal or no it's not like we need to take that signal this is a signal that we have a bullish um a divergence now as opposed to what we're having over here completely different setup for the market and uh, we need to pay attention to that i think the, that buyers will take that signal we need to see if the market in general will accept that signal specifically we have been uh, uh losing that buying pressure the whole time and sellers completely uh, dominated the market here ever since um uh, april so midway through april so 
we need to see how that plays out uh, again pay attention to the hourly chart pay attention to how we actually uh, react to this level uh, we discussed that yesterday in the live stream and today again we're going to give you another update more in details in terms of price action so make sure you stay tuned for that maybe the next couple of uh, hours we'll go live uh, but yeah again in terms of the uh, overall in terms of the uh, news that uh, are out there we have um, i'll leave those links in the description for you i'm not really gonna uh, fully delve into details here uh, u.s senator cynthia loomis saying bitcoin should be a part of retirement portfolio uh, she um, she added that so whether you're an employee that has a retirement fund uh, fund i'd like to see uh, those retirement funds invested in Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies that are good stores of value. So we're seeing, you know, the whole market is polarized, uh, political figures fully with uh, Bitcoin, uh, fully against Bitcoin. There's, uh, there is polarization in the market and we need to see what's going to happen. We see all these central banks now talk about digital currencies, uh, central bank digital currencies which is also another thing you need to be paying attention to because it's going to be it's either going to really push uh, the crypto space to the next level or uh, basically halt its its progress because governments wants, wanted they want the technology uh, but they don't necessarily want the token itself right so um, uh, they're not just going to adopt something that's going to go against uh, their own currency so it's not all words and no play from Loomis side either she revealed holding over five bitcoin in the tuesday interview a stash valued of over 176,000 at press time her first time came back when bitcoin traded at just 330 dollars she further um revealed so um uh, yeah uh, uh, and usage is already beginning to happen. Last month saw El Salvador legalizing Bitcoin as a legal tender in the country with a primary focus on Lightning Network for processing payments and facilitating um, remittance. Uh, others like Panama and Paraguay are juggling with their own set of uh, regulations to include Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as part of the broader economy. Again, 6 billion NCR opens Bitcoin purchases to 650 banks and credit unions. Again, there's so much demand in the market. Banks are scrambling uh, to, you know, because if you have uh, if you have some money in the bank and uh, you, uh, you know, taking your money out to go put on exchange like Binance or whatever the case might be, you know, it's not good for the bank. That's just um, uh, uh, cash, actually cash uh, outflow from the bank. So they're trying to, you know, contain that and banks are actually being pushed to uh to have that service for their um for their customers so they can actually uh, retain uh that cash flow and have it you know just provide that service. there's so much demand for it you gotta meet it otherwise you know people are gonna go to different banks that actually offer that service so 650 us banks will soon be able to offer bitcoin purchases to an estimated to 24 million total customers as part of the deal between enterprise uh, payments giant NCR and digital asset manager uh, firm uh, NYDIG, community banks including North Carolina-based First Citizens Bank and credit unions including Bay Federal. So a bunch of people, you know, a bunch of corporations are actually inv uh, involved in this. Um, instead of having to deal with the burdensome regulatory requirements uh, related to actually holding the cryptocurrency for their customers, the financial institutions that opt to have that service available will rely on NYDIG's custody service. And uh, yeah, uh, to, uh, but this effort came because they wanted to capitalize on demand seen from banks and credit unions, tired of seeing crypto purchases made from their accounts to outside exchanges by providing these clients a way to buy Bitcoin and eventually spend it within their existing accounts. They move puts uh, they, uh, the move puts these institutions in direct competition with cryptocurrency exchanges. So 650 banks, uh, six billion dollars. Is going to open that purchase up for Bitcoin and just imagine all that consumer base that now, um, you know, you're just going through your bank. So it's more like it's more safe for people and uh, it's just going to have access to a lot more customer base that, uh, you know, is going to bring a lot more uh, users into the uh, into the market. Uh, so, again, uh, here's what the Federal Reserve or the Fed vice chair had to say about Bitcoin, CBDCs and price shoot pants, you know, had, I guess, a, a funny um, uh, comparison there. The Fed and Treasury have established their skepticism when it came when it comes to cryptocurrencies and other digital assets. Obviously, we know that we've been seeing all these comments. Market has been polarized. Uh, we understand that. He's saying gold will always glitter, but uh, novelty by definition fades. Bitcoin and its ilk will accordingly almost certainly remain a risky and speculative investment rather than a revolutionary means of payment, and they are therefore highly unlikely to affect the role of the US dollar or require a response with the CBDC. Um, again. All central banks, Bank of International Settlements, uh, yeah, got Russia working on their own CBDC. CBDC means uh, Central Bank Digital Currency. We got Russia also testing here within the next uh, year. Uh, the U.S. is also testing that. 
um, overall the Bank of France. There's a bunch of countries actually to work on their own um, central bank digital currency because it has a lot of use case and we're in the digital word, uh, world and uh, yeah, they're a lot faster to settle um, uh, digital um, uh, currencies. Uh, it's, uh, you know, whatever, you know, central banks usually do with, uh, with uh, you know, printing more money or, or burning, you know, are they gonna, uh, is, uh, all of that's gonna be a lot more, um, even, you know, just tracking um, where that money is, uh, is definitely something that uh, they are interested in. So in my judgment, uh, uh, we do not need to fear stable coins. The Federal Reserve is a traditionally supportive, responsible private sector innovation. Additionally, private sector stable coins may facilitate faster and cheaper cross-border payments. And again, yeah, the whole market is polarized when it comes to that. And uh, we just need to see what's going to happen initially. But we know for a fact a lot of these central banks are actually in favor of uh, digital currencies, central bank digital currencies, and uh, we want to see how that's going to affect the crypto, uh, crypto space. So, again, the biggest news I think you need to know, uh, know about here uh, today, for the first time, Ethereum surpassing uh, Bitcoin in terms of um, uh, uh, this metric, which is uh, uh, this renewed belief in the Ethereum um, a community surfaced at a time when altcoin, uh, when the altcoin for the first time surpassed Bitcoin in address activity, according to data collected by uh, by Sentiment. Uh, Bitcoin address uh, activity noted a decline owing to its dropping value. Even though Ethereum also felt uh, in its valuation due to its correlation with Bitcoin, there have been a uh, there have been developments on the tech side like EIP fifteen fifty nine, which I guess uh, sometime today or tomorrow. I'm not really sure. I haven't really. Uh, fully checked but we know it's coming up uh, keeping the sentiment still uh, positive in the market due to these upgrade everyone's been excited about uh, what's happening with ethereum there's just a quick chart um, uh, by sentiment uh, saying you know ETH is uh, unique addresses spiking ahead for of bitcoin for the first time ever in crypto uh, history um, following up on yesterday's report on ethereum uh, fud and the buy opportunity we saw today uh, uh, we saw today has marked the historic day for the first time in crypto history. ETH address activity is above Bitcoin address activity and as prices have soared back above the 2100. So pretty, pretty, pretty big news um, uh, for Ethereum. Uh, a lot has been going on and everyone is excited for the, um, you know, for the new, uh, for the new reduced fees, for the faster transactions and uh, for you know just more security which is going to attract a lot more use uh, user base and uh, yeah everyone's excited for DeFi. you know all these banks are 100 percent going to uh, try and you know have some sort of a uh, they're just going to start dabbling in the DeFi space and see how that uh, how how certain protocols are actually going to be adopted so ethereum uh, everyone's been talking about ethereum actually flipping uh, bitcoin at one point so i guess uh, we're seeing that for the first time right now in terms of address, address activity is market cap going to follow I'm not really sure, but uh, it's definitely something that we need to keep in mind here. So this spike in activity was visible at e as ETH price recovered above 2100. The surge in address activity was the indication of the trust the traders have put in Ether, especially with the development of EIP 1559 days away. The update could push the value of ETH higher and traders were seen buying the dip. Ethereum's testnet launches are expected on June 30th and July 7th. OK, so there we go. July 7th ahead of the launch on the official Ethereum mainnet slated, is slated for uh, late July. So sorry, it's late July. Um, uh, so yeah, Ethereum blockchain led the daily cent, uh, settlement volume compared to Bitcoin too. As per money movers, Bitcoin settled around 9.93 billion a day, while Ethereum settled thrice its uh, value. As the market takes a turn, users has also uh, have also been expecting a positive moves from Ethereum. The crowd sentiment towards Ethereum remained historically low, presenting a great potential opportunity to buy uh, against the masses. So. Uh, let's see how that plays out. There's more and more um, news out here uh, uh, today that came out uh, again with Coinbase revealing plans for a crypto app store amid uh, global refocus. Uh, I'll also leave this link in the description. They had uh, this this uh, um, uh, uh, blog post, I guess, that was put up by uh, by the uh, by the CEO himself, uh, talking about them actually. Uh, you know, let's just talk about it here. Who cares? Uh, top U.S. based centralized. A crypto exchange Coinbase has announced plans to launch a crypto app store offering third party developed products. He's saying Apple did not attempt to build every app for the iPhone. It empowered developers and gave mobile users an easy way to access new innovative apps. We need to do the same in crypto. Armstrong estimated there's now tens of billions of dollars of economic activity running on dApps. Uh, the post also emphasized Coinbase's commitment to expanding the number of crypto assets it supports and increasing the speed of new listing, announcing plans to reduce its legal review for um, uh, prospective 
uh, listings and uh, launch and uh, they will launch an experimental zone for new assets so again everything has been going you know everything the, the, the price action in my opinion is not really as important as what's been going on in the market and uh, it's definitely undervalued we're seeing right now you know there's a lot of scrutiny uh, for uh, Binance globally um, uh, Coinbase has been moving in a different way uh, I would assume a lot more uh, regulatory friendly and compliant uh, Coinbase's new plans come as regulators are increasingly taking a, a aim at globally operating crypto exchanges with the United Kingdom's Financial Conduct Authority ordering Binance to seize, uh, seize all regulated activities again uh, responding to a broader um, a crypto crackdown in China Hobi or Hobi, I'm not, I don't know how you'd even call it. Uh, uh, they banned Chinese users from accessing its derivative, uh, derivatives product in addition to retail traders in the UK. Again, in April, the financial regulator, uh, regulator of the Canadian province of Ontario accused Bybit and Qcoin of violating local securities law, with Bybit also coming under fire from Japan's financial service agency uh, the following month. So, a lot has been going on in the market uh, that you need to pay attention to. Uh, there has been uh, a huge shift right now. You know, we've been asking for uh, adoption. Adoption is here, but adoption also comes with a lot of regulations. And uh, yeah, for us to bring in those big guys, uh, those big corporations, there's a, a compliance aspect that we need to understand uh, that uh, they need to have a sustainability aspect to it, you know, in terms of, well, what is your product? Uh, how's your product affecting the environment? Is it sustainable? Uh, and um, you know, uh, these questions have been getting asked. And again, uh, this always happens for any new product in the in the, in the space and the market. And the government comes in and they start to you know ask questions and actually move forward on on those exchanges. And those exchanges have to comply. Otherwise, you can't really access the market. And that's what's happening right now. You got uh, Binance US. Um, instead of uh, just Binance, uh, um, they have their own uh, US um, uh, website for it. Is that going to happen for Canada, uh, for in Ontario? Is that going to happen, you know, also for Qcoin, Bybit? We're not sure, but then again, for them to access those those markets, they have to be compliant and they have to follow certain regulations. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm going to shut up. I've been talking a lot here. Thank you guys for watching. If you uh, uh, make sure, you know, uh, stay tuned. If, uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Uh, you know, if you like the video, uh, uh, make sure you press that like button. Uh, we're going live here within the next, uh, I would say, couple of hours. It's 8.30 here my time. So I would say sometime within uh, yeah, 10.30 or 11 o'clock is where we're going to uh, go live. So make sure you stay tuned. Thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.